कैसे हो भाई फेरम मैं हूं अनस और मैंने भर भर के मीम्स देखी है मेरे बारे में लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एवरी टाइम आई गो लुक अप द मीम्स फॉर द चैनल इट्स ऑलवेज इट्स ऑलवेज वन ऑफ टू थिंग्स मी डीप फेक ऑन अ टोबी मगुआयर्स बट होल और इट्स अ मूड लव्स दैट वर्चुअल मशीन आई गॉट टू ट्राई एंड एक्सप्लेन टू मूड लुक आई नो दैट आई कम अक्रॉस एज अ पैरानॉइड नट जॉब आई नो दैट आई कम अक्रॉस एज अ टिन फॉल हैट वेयरिंग फ्लैट अर्थिस्ट ऑन द वेबसाइट एंड यू नो व्हाट इट्स अ गुड थिंग ऑल राइट बिकॉज़ एनीबॉडी हु अंडरस्टैंड्स बिग डेटा आई अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मच आवर डेटा गेट्स सर्वेलेंस्ड एवरी सिंगल डे सो if i'm worrying about my computer security <coughs> i'm the average joe yes i should be worrying about it okay there's tons of hacks that take place every day nothing is safe that's what it is but i'm not here to fear monger i'm here to guide you through the meme i know that people make fun of it i get it and i embrace it i totally understand it because 99% of the people uh, who are saying that are absolutely right i i'm taking really heavy extra precautions and 99% of people don't need the setup that i do it is actually quite cumbersome if you don't know what the fuck you're doing But that being said, let's cover why I use it. Now, my main operating system is Linux or if yes, we can get technical GNU plus Linux or whatever you want to get. I'm just going to call it Linux, okay? I'm going to call it Linux because I think most of us know what the heck Linux is. If you want to get all technical about it, I've just told you. Now, I use Arch Linux and I don't want to say that like I have this badge of honor. Uh Arch Linux is great. You know, it's a very nice operating system, but unless you have Linux experience, maybe it's not advisable to be your first operating system like if you can get through an install guide yeah you, you could use it but uh, if you don't want to rip your hair out you know and you don't want to complain about your first linux experience being bad then i would suggest you take it up the butthole pretty easily with manjaro pop os uh or or ubuntu or or, or whatever okay just use an uh, just use a linux distribution that is properly supported and it's updated regularly okay that's all i can really say there's plenty of good ones out there the ones i listed like pop os and manjaro are the ones i heavily recommend for new users there's no shame in how hard your linux experience is okay if some people want to dip their cock into like rusty nails that's their prerogative if you want to have a heavenly time you know stress free using your computer that's your prerogative don't let an elitist fucking you know convince you otherwise Now, for me, I'm going to cover a lot of the use cases. 80% of my computer work under Linux is perfect, okay? Because most of what I do on a computer with that 80% is listen to music, watch movies, uh use Discord to talk with the boys, all right? And browse the web. Guess what? 100% of that shit is easily done under Linux. It's the same across whatever. You could be using a Macintosh, a Windows computer, a Linux computer, you will be fine 100% of the time. Web browsers are the same thing all across the board, okay? It's literally all it is. You know, Linux used to be, I guess, somewhat of a niche operating system. It still is, but Linux used to be genuinely harder. The software sometimes was never there. It was never equivalent, but I will say for 90% 95% of computer users you know and that includes your grandma that includes your mom and dad that includes you know the average normie that isn't on reddit or they're not playing video games linux is perfect i could install linux on 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 your mom's computer and she will not know the difference between windows or mac into 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 like i don't know she will not recognize the difference now that means the rest of the 20% of what i do on a computer all right that's where i need vms for So let's just cover it on a use by use kit basis, right? Gaming. Oh, we all do gaming. We all play the video games on the PC. Now, I'll say 90% of my gaming experience is single player games. Okay? So I'm I've been playing some I'm playing some single player stuff like Control, uh like Assassin's Creed, and I will tell you right now, uh, nearly 100% of my single player games work underneath Linux just fine. This is actually why I wanted to kind of make this video. It's super crazy. Linux is actually becoming a strong contender in PC gaming. And let me explain why. Linux and Valve, Valve effectively has worked with the open source community to develop something called Proton. Now there are other tools like DXVK, which is a DirectX the graphic API to Vulkan transition layer, and there's also VK3, VKD3D for DirectX 12 to Vulkan. So there's new technologies that are constantly emerging. But one of the biggest advancements is from Valve. So if you don't know this, If you're on Linux, you can go to Steam right now and enable something called Steam Play or Steam Proton, and that'll let you download the Windows version of the game onto your Linux system. Have Valve automatically stage it and play a game just like you would on a Windows computer.
If it sounds like arcane fucking magic to you, it really isn't. It's basically Wine, which is effectively taking the Windows Sys calls and converting them to Linux, you know, POSIX calls at the same time. It's, it is kind of arcane magic, but it's, it's basically a compatibility layer. Now, because of this, I've been able to play some pretty recent games. For instance, I've been chugging through Death Stranding again, a DirectX 12 exclusive game underneath full ultra wide 144 frames per second like it's like like it's no problem i've been gaming under linux just fine i've been playing monster hunter just fine i'm playing assassin's creed just fine i've been playing some watchdogs just fine even games like final fantasy 15 that are absolutely jaw-droppingly beautiful and they use a lot of computer resources run surprisingly well underneath proton just fine here's footage of me literally playing the game at maximum settings 3440 by 1440 and it has not dipped under like 80 frames per second it's actually really really surprising no crashes even do but what happens when the experience doesn't work 100% of the time? And this is where I want to definitely mention this because I feel like there are definitely Linux channels out there that don't stress how, how imperfect the solution can be sometimes. Linux is great. I love it. But it's not perfect. It has some problems. When you take for the fact that you're directly using a compatibility layer to play a Windows game on Linux, it's crazy. But the problems arise for two specific reasons. One is shitty DRM, okay? If you're a PC gamer, you heard of Denuvo, you heard of all this anti-piracy garbage. Uh, anti-piracy stuff is literally the bane of Linux, all right? If you're trying to run games with anti-piracy under Linux, it's, it's literally like playing Russian fucking roulette, okay? You put the gun to your head, all right? Sometimes the motherfucker wanna work, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the game gets patched. And then it breaks everything. I was recently playing Fall Guys under Linux just fine. One day they updated it with easy anti-cheat and boy oh boy, it was not a Linux version anymore. So this is where the VMs come in. Now there's another thing, it's called anti-cheat. And if you know anything about anti-cheat is that it's, fu I hate it. I despise anti-cheat. I feel like it encroaches way much onto our privacy than what we get out of it. But anti-cheat is something that breaks Linux games entirely. For instance, Rainbow Six Siege is a game that I used to play very heavily. Uh, it can run under Linux just fine. There's very good proof of it. The problem is the anti-cheat breaks it. <laughs> but anyways, this is why the VMs come into play. Now, I made several videos talking about my virtual machine setups. And just to quickly tell you guys, I use QEMU-KVM or QEMU-KVM. I basically use a hypervisor on my Linux. So it's basically a kernel-based machine. It's running alongside my actual kernel. So what that means in very layman's terms is I'm giving my virtual machine as bare metal as I can. So when I run Windows under a virtual machine, Windows, after I'm done, you know, configurating it to my heart's content. Windows actually believes it's running like the main operating system, but it isn't. We're lying to it. And the reason I do it is so that I can play games that necessarily won't work underneath Linux, and I can just spin up a VM, play a game under there, and I'll be just fine. Good example is Red Dead Redemption 2. It doesn't work under Linux at all for me, but I fire up a Windows VM and Bob's your uncle. I'm playing Red Dead Online, and then I get completely sad why I even fired it up in the first place, and I turn it off. But that's kind of what I'm getting at with you. Gaming is great. And underneath my system, I can choose to game on both sides relatively great. And it takes me a matter of seconds to spin up a VM, play a game under there and shut it off and so on and so forth. Now that takes me to my second scenario, which is recording slash editing. Now, as somebody that makes YouTube content, I know that recording and editing is a very important thing. And underneath Linux, it's definitely doable, <laughs> but it's not fucking great. Let me explain why. As far as editing goes, I use Adobe Creative Cloud, which does not exist underneath Linux. It's not natively supported. You can't jam that shit into like a, a compatibility layer and call it a day. It just doesn't fucking work. All right. Now, you might be wondering, but Muda, there are free and open source alternatives. You're right but they're not professional grade, okay? Trust me, I need the whole suite of Adobe stuff when I'm working, and if I can't do any of that, it's not gonna happen. But this is where the virtual machines save my ass again. I don't even have to use Windows. If you go back to some of my older videos, all right, not even old, like a couple months old, I, I looked at a Mac virtual machine where I made my own goddamn Macintosh. And yes, by creating my own Macintosh and passing a graphic card to it, I was able to emulate Mac OS and then install Adobe Creative Cloud and edit just like I normally would. Now, you might be wondering, but Muda, all this VM talk, is it actually stable? 
Let me just cover it real quick. When I went to the gaming world, I was playing Siege just fine. 144 hertz, no input lag, no problem at all. I could actually switch my keyboard and mouse between virtual machines and operating systems on the fly, and there would be no degradation in quality, right? No issues in sound, no nothing. When it comes to editing, all of my videos for literally uh, since March have been done underneath a virtual machine through Mac. And let me explain how that works, okay? It's effectively like using a real Mac, except it's completely virtualized. And because I optimized it my own way, it's it, all Mac does is it believes it's running on an actual Apple computer. I can use iMessage, I can use all their services, and I can use uh, their uh, what, whatever whatever they give to me. Now again, if this breaks down or if Apple figures out, they have their full right to ban me from their network. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ever contest that. I know that I'm breaking their EULA, but it's doable. And the stability is great. The reason I use Mac is that it's, I believe, to me, it's way more stable than just Windows 10. The video that I worked on, which was one of the longest videos I've ever done in my life, is a four and a half hour Metal Gear Solid 4 video. Uh, it's a great video. I consider it like one of my favorite this year. Completely done underneath a virtual machine. <laughs> Completely done under a VM. And four and a half hours, you would think after that much time spent, it might actually start breaking my system down. It might actually... No, it worked just fine, ladies and gentlemen. I edited that. I edited trafficking up. I edited Roblox. I had a good time editing all of the long form content we've been covering on this channel through virtualized machines and containers. And for the most part, it works relatively well. Now, this takes me to the last and final case use for me, and this is where, if you're reading the title, I might have said hundreds of virtual machines, uh, and that's true. I do a lot of programming and building on the side. Uh, for instance, uh, there, there are a lot of emulators that I like to go on GitHub for and get, like, specialized versions and builds so that I can run certain games better. For instance, Metal Gear Solid 4 is a game that I'm testing through emulation again. And there are builds that exist for the PS3 emulator that better support Metal Gear Solid 4 than anything else. Uh, the reason for that is people have solve the solution on their end, but the mainline build can't add those solutions because it would break something else inherently. What I can do with virtual machines is I can stage a VM and I can basically make a computer virtually that's dedicated to building specific projects off GitHub, meaning that I don't have to mess up my main Linux operating system. I can spin up a VM, send it the build stuff, configure it, build it, and then bring it back out of the VM and use it to my heart's content. There is that use case, and that's why I use virtual machines like crazy. Now, there is a final use case, and that is web browsing. You might be wondering, Muda, really a virtual machine for browsing the fucking web? I think you've lost it, which, no, I haven't. Let me explain why. Uh, if you've ever been to virus investigations, you know that we cover things like browser exploits, browser jacking, things like that. The reason I fire up a virtual machine is I know that some of the sites I go to could, in fact, have some pretty shoddy malware hidden within them. And even if I'm on Linux, that doesn't excuse me. Just because you're on Linux or Mac doesn't mean you won't get malware or you won't get viruses. You could, in theory, absolutely. The only reason Windows gets it more is because more people use it. That's just the case of it. We're literally defended by obscurity. So the reason I use a VM is some of the sites I go to, you know, if I want to browse a website to my heart's content, I don't have to feel paranoid. I can open up any link under a VM and all it's going to do is infect that VM, which is a great thing for me. I'm not hurt personally from any of that. Now, that said, there are things like VM escaping viruses and malware, and uh, honestly, a threat isn't that high for me to goddamn worry about, but that's really all I'm talking about. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this video sort of died down some of the, some of the conspiracy theory stuff. Honestly, I, I want to make another video where I'm just going to cover my entire build. I think it would be kind of interesting to show you guys like sort of the record to edit process underneath virtual machines all the way through. So if you want that, let me know in the comment section below. However, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your favorite paranoid nut job. Finally signing off. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, I am out.